For the next few minutes, we will look at a technique for intubating mice that has been used successfully at St. Louis University and elsewhere for several years. The elements of the technique are based on published literature and modifications of the methods we use for rats. Hallowell EMC, with our cooperation, has assembled intubation kits for rats and mice, each containing the various items needed to make intubation a much more manageable task. In addition to the kits, a work stand allows the mouse to be held securely in a comfortable position as the intubation is performed. Before intubation is started, it is important to have everything prepared and in place. First, the work stand is configured for the mouse. The body positioners are rotated so that the shallow, stepped ends face the operator. Lidocaine jelly is used to provide local anesthesia to the cords and is placed in one of the small wells at the front of the stand. It is not supplied with a stand because Hallowell EMC does not have a pharmacy license. However, a place is reserved for it in the intubation kit together with the stock number and the 800 number of Webster Veterinary Supply. Two sizes of endotracheal tubes are supplied. The larger tube with a blue connector is 1.27 millimeters in diameter and is suitable for mice weighing more than 21 to 22 grams. The smaller tube, color-coded orange, is 1.22 millimeters in diameter and can be used for mice weighing as little as 17 to 18 grams. Unlike the rat, mouse endotracheal tubes are not tied in place. Attempting to tie the tube in usually results in accidental extubation and the tubes fit tightly enough that with care, ties are not required. Once an appropriate tube is selected, it is placed on the intubation guide wire. The tube is positioned so that the tip is on the inside of the curve of the guide wire, seen here and here. If the tip is not properly oriented, it may pull away from the guide wire, as seen in this view, and cause difficulty or trauma as it passes the cords. Next, the speculum is mounted on the otoscope. Remember that the otoscope handle will be up, not down, during intubation. The speculum is mounted so that the cutaway portion is facing the operator's dominant hand when the handle is held up. In this view, the speculum is correctly positioned for a right-handed operator. This part is specially molded with a cutaway to allow side access and it is autoclavable. It will fit either a Welsh Allen or an MDS operating head otoscope. Although there is a place reserved in the mouse pack for the otoscope, one is not provided with the pack because many people already own one. If you do not, they are available from Hallowell EMC. Now we are ready to intubate. A relatively deep plane of anesthesia is essential for safe intubation. The mouse is placed supine on the intubation stand. Care and positioning is important because if the mouse is rotated to the right or left, intubation becomes much more difficult. The incisor loop is applied and secured to the stand. And the stand is tilted to 45 degrees. A small cotton swab is placed under the tongue and rotated towards the operator to extend the tongue and lift the mandible. With your elbow resting on the bench and your hand braced against the stand, the speculum is slowly and gently inserted parallel to the hard palate and carefully elevated until a clear view of the cords is obtained. The otoscope may be lifted or lowered slightly to improve the view as needed but should remain parallel to the stand and should not be rocked or rotated up and down in an attempt to improve the view. Once an adequate view is obtained, the applicator is dipped into the lidocaine jelly and very lightly coated, then inserted from the side at the corner of the mouth. The jelly is applied to the cords as shown and the stand is lowered briefly while the lidocaine takes effect. The stand is returned to 45 degrees. The cords are again visualized. 
and the guide wire is inserted from the corner of the mouth and passed through the cords into the trachea. Be careful not to insert the guide wire beyond the thoracic inlet. The speculum is removed and the tube is advanced over the guide wire and into the trachea. Once the tube connector has reached the nose, hold the connector and immediately remove the guide wire. The stand is now lowered and the tube is checked for correct position. A cooled mirror may allow direct observation of breath condensation. Or, if the tube is briefly obstructed, an abrupt change in the breathing pattern will be seen. If a misintubation has occurred, a second attempt may be made. However, if the mouse is to survive, no more than two attempts should be made. Trauma and swelling from repeated attempts can lead to respiratory obstruction and death. Finally, the incisor loop is removed, the body positioner is loosened, and the mouse is gently removed from the stand. The trachea of the mouse is quite short and the tube is not inserted very far. Considerable care must be taken when removing the intubated mouse and connecting it to the breathing circuit.